Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Battleground Games Live. I'm Andrew. Hi there. And with me we have Amanda. Hi. And we had different plans for tonight but they fell through so that's okay. We'll make do. Uh, we've decided instead of doing the game we had originally planned for tonight, uh, Amanda's going to demo some Chrononauts. She's going to play that uh, solo, which you can do. It's yep. definitely got a fun solitaire mode to it. She'll explain how that works. Yep. And I'm going to continue to paint some of my Ypar, uh Undead Soldiers that I've been building for the Rune Wars miniature game. So, low-key sort of day for us today. Chill sort of stream. Yep. Uh, just some painting and some cards and just you and Hanging us. Out. Hi guys! Uh, and hey! Hello Dave! Hi Dave! In the chat already. So, yeah. Should be fun. Um, I'm gonna put some painting music on. I've got a mix that I put together that is um, Gavin, uh, Gavin, Dunn. Gavin Dunn of Miracle, Miracle of Sound. Sound. Uh, and it's just a fun little mix of music. We love Gavin. We love Miracle of Sound. He's really cool. Uh, does He's a chill dude. Does video game based and movie based songs. Mostly video games. Um, in fact, so he has videos that will be put together for his songs and they go up on YouTube. And Warner Brothers recently claimed copyright on his Wonder Woman song. So the song is his, but the video is now Warner Brothers getting money off of it. Yeah. So he sort of, he had said on Twitter um, that it sort of made him reluctant to do more movie-based songs. Whereas a couple of other companies are basically like, hey, free publicity, super. <laughs> So yeah. I'm going to put on some painting music. Yeah. We'll start out with Sovngarde's song. Uh, if you want to check out Gavin's band camp, it's in yeah. the uh, links down below here, where it says uh, music during our stream is provided by. And I'm going to get... Hopefully that's not too loud or too quiet. Maybe I should turn it up a bit. I can't hear it at all. Well, no, we can't hear oh, it Oh, we can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Um... And I'm going to play... Dave, tell me if that's too loud. Yeah, let us know. Um, I'm going to play Chrononauts. And Chrononauts is one of our favorite games. We've had it for ages. And then it was out of print for a while, and we couldn't get it to the store. And now it's available again, and we're really excited about that. I played it until we sold out of it at PAX East this past year. Um, we Which had, you did with a lot of games. I, yeah, but um, I had said I can sell this game, and I think uh, it was sort of assumed I was exaggerating. I was not. Um, I can sell this game. Because it's an easy demo. It's one that's super easy to show off sort of a simple version of it. And it's really fun. And you get to time travel and kill Hitler. And I always enjoy that. Yeah, who wouldn't want to kill Hitler? Oh. Oh. I'm, I'm muting the other microphone. Hopefully we're not going to We're trying to cut down on the noise from the store. We have some plans to try and reduce. Obviously, we're doing this from the loft at Battleground Games in the Abington location. And it's Friday Night Magic out there. And you can hear it. There's a lot of people playing Magic. Which is good. We like that. But it's noisy too. This magic is not like that. You know, like <laughs> sit there and stare in silence, unless like you're doing really badly and your board state stinks. That yeah, would be I mean I've been there, but preferably you're not dealing with that. Anyway, um, I'm gonna play Chrononauts. Chrononauts can be a competitive game. You can play in teams, um, or you can play so, like PvP, or you can play uh, co-op or solo. The solitaire and co-op game are the same thing, we're just doing it with other people who are co-op. And it starts out with a field of cards. So you can't really see the cards themselves on the camera, but I'll hold a couple of them up. They are either purple or um, or they're blue. 
When you flip a purple card, it causes other cards to be on but not all of them, just certain ones. So, you have different cards with different actions, so there are certain things like Spurgeon's assassination cards. There are, and those like only flip specific things. There's reverse fate, which is the most generic card. Flip any purple card. Or orange. Once you flip it to orange, you can flip it back. Now the trick is, if Andrew Johnson doesn't get impeached, what happens instead? Well, you start out with nothing in the paradox. Nothing happens. Well, if that's split, we need to catch that paradox. If you have more than 13 paradoxes, um, you can... The board is closed. Any good time session music is a little louder of the voice. Sky. Okay, I'm moving in the midst of the clouds um, drifting by at the top of the world. that's any better. Now, the goal of the game is to travel through time, right? We're affecting the timeline. The reason you're wanting to do that is because you will have personalities, you have time travelers. And each of the time travelers have one blue that happened the way our timeline happened, and two orange that happened differently. Because also in this deck are things like this that are patches that go over paradoxed parts of the timeline. So something that happened instead. So you can see this one says David Koresh's ministry opens a new hospital and that patches the Waco compound burning to the ground. So this timeline, uh, this version of the game ends in 1999. That was when the game originally came out was around then. There is uh, there's two expansions to the board. One is the early American Chrononauts, and that is actually an entirely separate board that happens above that, so it's prior to 1865. And then there's the Gore Years, which is another like six or seven cards that go on the end um, that posit, what if Al Gore had won the election in 2000? And th those come with like other time travelers, so we have multiple time travelers. And they all have different goals, and they all have little stories. It's and there's also as someone who likes an expansion that has additional right. time travelers. So the additional time travelers, the lost stories, does not come with more timeline. They were additional characters that were made by fans to go with this existing timeline. So the way the solitaire version works is I have taken out a bunch of cards from the game when you are playing competitively. You've got a bunch of different card types. You have actions. You have artifacts, some of which are really funny. My personal favorites, uh, aside from all the dinosaurs, are um, the Mona Lisa, an excellent forgery. She's winking. The Mona Lisa, an obvious forgery. She has a mustache. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the Mona Lisa, the real thing. So you have all these artifacts, and the artifacts are um, a different, um, they're like a secondary win condition. So if someone like totally blows up your timeline to the point where you cannot get your time traveler home. If you're playing competitively, you get one time traveler and no one else knows who you are. 
Um, if someone blows up the timeline to the point where you can't get home, there's just no way for you to undo it. They've discarded the patch you need, or they're the sentient cockroach in the future, and they oh, triggered mm -hmm. World War III. Um, you have an alternate way. There's the guy who lives at the Kiki Hut at the end of the... That's one of the expanded yeah, that's right. ones. That's, uh, that's, yeah. Um, so His goal is to cause 13, 13 uh, paradoxes. paradoxes and destroy the universe. Um, you get a mission in the uh, competitive version, and the mission involves finding, getting control of like three different artifacts. So, in the solitaire version, you take out the artifacts, you take out the missions, you take out the actions, you take out the memos. Memos are like memo, memo from your future self. Um, you take out all of that stuff because those are only really useful in the competitive game. So you take out all of that. And all that leaves you with is the patches and the actions. There is another version of the game that is sort of a quick and casual uh, multiplayer co uh, competitive game that only uses the stuff that isn't used for this. And it's basically just to gain control of artifacts who don't actually use the timeline. I've never heard of that. It was in Is the instructions. I had never really, I mean, we never looked at it. We, we learned yeah. how to play the basic game, and then we didn't really I wonder look if that into that. Added it might have been a new edition. edition. Yeah. But I think that's kind of cool. That means that like, if you have one person that's like, I want to play with the timeline, and then you have someone else who, like a couple of other people are like, we, we want to play, but we don't really want to play with this wackiness. Um, you can have both at the same time using the same copy of the game. It's pretty cool. So, the way this is going to work is uh, I'm, I'm going to start out easy. I'm going to give myself less of a challenge to start with. I'm going to shuffle my identity cards, which is kind of weird. I'm used to playing with the Lost Identities pack. Mm -hmm. This is not our copy. This is the story's like, demo copy. So... So at PAX, um, I demoed it and demoed it and demoed it. And then we thought we had run out of copies, but I was like, no, no, there was one more. We had a copy left, it was over here somewhere. Um, and then whoever was at the register, I forget who it was, was like, wait, what about the demo copy? And I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, that's... That's mine. That's yeah, my copy. With several From other home. games, you did actually sell the demo copy. We I sold did. the demo copy of Colt Express. We sold the demo copy of Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah, we sold all of those. But the demo copy of Chrononauts is my personal copy, which has all the expansions. And it also has a couple of promo cards. Um, there's one of the promo cards I got signed by Chris Steven. That is so cool. It. She happened to wander by the booth. And I asked her to sign a card. She did. That's cool. So yeah, I have given myself four characters to try and get home to start with. Um, normally, I in a full game of solitaire, you would have eight. And that's really hard. Because the goal of the solitaire game isn't to get like yourself home. It's to get all of your travelers home. So I'm going to try and do that. Um, so I have Gunther. Gunther um, needs Seoul to be captured by North Korea in 1950. Now that is something that actually happened in our timeline. But what happened in his timeline that didn't happen with ours is in 1917, instead of the U.S. declaring war on Germany, Woodrow Wilson is going to keep the U.S. out of the war. In 1918, instead of Europe being in ruins after World War I, the European economy is going to boom. So that's Gunther. Uh, Yinong, uh, in 1868, Andrew Johnson was impeached, that is part of our timeline, but in 1944, instead of D-Day, Warsaw is going to host the Olympic Games, and in 1999, instead of the Columbine High School Massacre, uh, guns are going to be banned. So, um, you may gather, looking at some of the stuff in the game, that Kristen and Andrew Moody are probably hippies. Um, and that's fine. You like that. I'm cool with that. Uh, I have Betty. 
Uh, in Betty's timeline, in 1945, A-bombs were dropped on Japan. Sorry. Uh, but in 1968, instead of uh, Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy getting murdered, the Vietnam Peace Accord gets signed. And in 1969, instead of Apollo 11 landing on the moon, cosmonauts are going to orbit the moon. Russia got there first. And finally, I have Rene, and Rene directly opposes Gunther. That's the trick to this game. This is where things get tricky, because Rene, in 1917, needs the U.S. to declare war on Germany. Uh, in 1929, instead of the tight, uh, <laughs> instead of the stock market crashing, the Titanic's going to explode. Nothing. Um, and in 1948, Berlin is going to host the World's Fair instead of uh, the Foundation of Israel. So, yeah, a lot of things happening. They they did a lot of sort of looking at like why certain things happened. It's simplified. It's not like super complex. It's not going into like massive geopolitical stuff. Um, but it's sort of a simple cause and effect concept. Um, the tricky one here is 1945, aid bombs dropped on Japan. A bombs get dropped on Japan, but you can paradox this very easily because it needs three things to happen in order for this to happen the way it happens in our timeline. Um, and that is that um, Hitler needs to open the 1936 Olympics. Pearl Harbor needs to be bombed by the Japanese, and the Manhattan Project needs to happen. If any one of those three things gets flipped, that will immediately uh, paradox the A-bombs getting dropped on Japan. And Betty needs those A-bombs, which I'm not thrilled with, but um, that means I need to be careful when it comes to uh, the things that affect this, because anything that affects this is also going to affect other things. So yeah. Here so you probably go. want to get Betty home first, just from an aesthetic standpoint, so that you can stop the A-bombs. Yeah, I feel like Betty and Renee need to go home pretty early. Although it's going to depend on what patches you draw. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like I want to get them home first, and then go for Gunther and Genon. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. So I draw a hand of five cards. So I have a Reverse Fate. I have a Prevent Assassination. Another reverse fate, allied troops invade Tokyo, and another reverse fate. So this wasn't super helpful. Um, allied troops invade Tokyo is not a patch that I need. It is one of the three 1945 patches. Or no, yeah. no, it's not 19, it's not three. It's the Cuban Missile Crisis has three patches. Oh, or no, okay. it is 45, it is 45. Uh, so there's, 1945 has um, three possible outcomes, if you paradox it. It has Allied Troops Invade Tokyo, it has um, World War Three, and World Peace. I like World Peace. When we play together, when Andy and I play together, we try to leave the board with Hitler dead and yeah. World Peace. Yeah. Those are our two big ones. Um, I mean, I personally like to keep the challenger from exploding. That seems nice. That was like a really traumatic thing in my job. So, I'm old. so unfortunately, um, I did not draw a useful pack. So I'm going to discard this and draw myself another card. So now I have five cards that will let me do stuff. So, so you can start manipulating the timeline. Yeah, I can start playing around with the timeline. So I'm looking at Betty and Renee um, first. God, I really, I really want to get like Betty home first. Let's see here. While you think about that, yeah, go let for me it. explain what I'm doing. So, sure. I've been painting these Y car for a while now, and I can't see the chat, but um, sorry about that. I had to take my glasses off because when I'm painting, I can see the figures much better without my glasses because I'm holding them like inches from my face. I'm super nearsighted, but that's good. Anyhow, the stage that I'm at with these figures is uh, fine detailing for most of them. 
Uh, this is a figure that I have completed as an example. You can see I've done his face. Is that coming up there for you? Um, yeah, I can see that. He's got his face, he's got some fine detailing on the shield here. You can see I've done these tiny little picks on the shield. Oh, um, those are good. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the figures that have not got that detail and adding it in. So here, I think this is, not, not that guy, the guy with the sword over his head, right? Here's the same figure without any of the detail. So I still need to do the rim of the shield and then the pips on it. I need to do all the fine detailing on his boots here. Yeah, wow. Um, the here. base looks really good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, for the base, I used uh, a textured paint, which means it's got like muck suspended in it to give it a texture. Yeah. Uh, here it is. I'm using Strickland mud for the bases there. Um, and then I just added a uh, tuft, which you can buy, sort of the lazy man facing technique, instead of using individual blades of grass, which you can do if you're a better artist than I. You can just stick a pre glued tuft on there and it looks perfectly serviceable. Why not? Well, these guys are just sort of line troops. I've got 16 Yeah, you've of got them. a bunch of them, so you yeah. might as well. I mean, if you were doing, like, your general or something, yeah, like, I might want to get that things. you want to be, like, real good with. But. So, let's see. All right, so you've, you've had some time to think about it. Yeah, so I have a Prevent Assassination card, and I feel like this is probably going to be useful. 1868. I need I need Andrew Johnson impeached. So unfortunately, Lincoln's gonna stay there for now. Um, but 1974, do I need that different? No. No, Nixon can still resign. Um, but I do need guns banned eventually. So I feel like maybe do you have to prevent if I keep uh, Lennon from getting him. murdered. Yeah, John Lennon. Yeah, so I'm gonna use that on Lennon. Uh, John Lennon's not going to get murdered. He's going to hey. he's going to get nearly killed, uh, but live. Yeah, the guns banned card, the flavor text on it says yeah. Senator John Lennon. Yeah. Um, so this is annoying. I just drew the patch for 1917, which is one of Renee's uh, things that she doesn't need. I really wanted Oops. to get her home first before Gunther. I thought she would be easier to deal with. Oh, that's annoying. Um, so I have a halt attack. Um, what's going to happen if I do Waco? Does that matter? No, it doesn't. Uh, Pearl Harbor, I, do, I don't want to play around with 1945 because Betty needs 1945. And I don't want to play around with the Lusitania because that's going to flip 1917. So I'm going to discard that. I'm going to draw myself another card. Oh, hey, look, it's World War III. Nobody needs that? You don't have Squatron? No, I do not have Squatron. Uh, so World War III says uh, human civilization destroyed as Cuban Missile Crisis escalates into nuclear war. So World War III is a 1962 uh, patch. Yeah, this creates the uber paradox. So what happens with this is if I deal with the Cuban Missile Crisis so that um, World War III happens, then it blows up the rest of the timeline. So anyone who needs something to happen after 1963, tough. Tough luck for you. So yeah, if you have the cockroaches and you're playing solitaire, they have to go home last. Yeah, there's one in the main game, and then there's a second one in the lost uh, identity for lost stories, lost topics. All right, well, I have some reverse dates. Let's start reversing things and hope we don't blow up the universe. Um, so, There's to be hope. Yeah, I'm going to start going for Betty. No, you know what? 
Yeah, Betty. Betty's further along in the timeline, so I think I'm gonna try and try and do that. Um, so for Betty, I she needs the Vietnam Peace Accord signed in '68 and cosmonauts to orbit the moon in '69. Both of those will be paradox if I prevent uh, JFK from being assassinated. So I'm gonna do that. Congratulations, JFK. You live. Injured in motorcade shooting. But now that means anything that gets paradoxed by that flips. Now Nixon resigning over here, it is affected by it, but it actually only flips if I also save Lincoln. We need to have both Lincoln and JFK win. Okay. This is how this all, all works. Um, so yeah, I don't have patches for that. So I do have a patch for 1933, the mild recession. Amanda and I have played this solitaire a fair amount. Like she said, she demoed it forever at PAX. <laughs> so she knows a lot of the patches that you need and how the timeline warps and wefts. Yeah. Um, if you just open this up and you laid out the timeline, it's going to take you a little while to, to learn to know what the patches are. But that's part of the joy of discovering the game, I think. Yeah. So the mild recession is a patch for 1933, which is normally the Great Depression. So I really, I like the names that they have for some of these things. Um, things could be a lot worse, so it's FDR, so is the card. So, unfortunately, uh, the Great Depression is going to still happen because I don't need the mild recession, so I'm going to discard it. A Zeppelin factory opened in Seoul? Well, I need the opposite of that for Gunther, and nobody needs this. So again, I'm going to discard it. Uh, Tokyo This is a lot easier with four than it is with... Oh, it's so much easier with four. So when I did the demo, I did it with three, and ah. I would have whoever I was demoing for just pick one to try and get home. But that way they had options. But The it, trick with the yeah. solitaire is you get to a point where you have something you need to flip for one of your cosmonauts, and something... Oh, Chronos, sorry. Yeah. Did you and say Cosmonauts? I don't know. But uh, if you flip that, it prevents somebody yeah. else from getting where they need to go. Yeah, it's annoying. So there's a little planning involved. So Tokyo nuked is uh, the Japanese-American war ends with third atomic bombing. I don't need that, and I don't want it. So out it goes. Communism reinvents itself in 1991. Um, I'm gonna discard that. I'm getting like all the patches I don't need, and I shuffled the heck out of this thing. Um, President King takes office. You know. Do you need that God, for the guns? I don't. But it's nice. I do like it. I do like having Martin Luther King become president. But I need I need to flip Nixon resigning, which means I would need to flip. Um, Lincoln assassinated, and in order to end flipping that would flip Andrew Johnson, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm sorry, Martin. Avert disaster. I don't oh, think the Hindenburg actually. It does the Hindenburg, and it fixes. It changes Seoul uh, capture by North Korea, but I need that to happen, and I don't need it to happen any other way. Wow, this is like a bummer of a hand. Nazis win! <laughs> no. 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 What? No, Nazis don't win? Okay, good. No, screw that card. Alright. Another reverse fate. I really would have liked to have pulled a patch that I actually need. That would have been super. Can I interrupt for a second? Sure. I'm about to do one of the final details on a model. So Ooh. Not the base, because the base is the last thing that I want to do. But this model, I've got all the little metal picks done. I've uh, painted the backs of his legs. I've put little bits on the back there. And he needs, hopefully you can see this on camera here. He needs his eyeballs. It really brings the figure to life. This guy has just black picks in his skull. And this is the last little detail that I'm doing for each of my minis as I get to that point. It's sort of my reward for having done all this work. And it's just... I'm going to keep that. Tiny little... Boop. Boop, boop. 
I have to have steady hands. Yep. Gosh. Come on, I really want to get Betty home. I need that Vietnam Peace Accord and those cosmonauts. I need both patches. There. Ugh. This guy is done aside from his base and maybe some uh, dry brushing. Archduke Ferdinand is gonna live. This guy is done aside from his base. This guy needs a lot of work. No. Done aside from his base. I need patches. The Titanic is, is gonna explode. Titanic's gonna explode, Andy. Blow it up. Oh, I didn't flip a card. Oh no. I forgot to do the. So I just patched um, a paradox. I patched the Titanic exploding. Um, the Titanic avoided an iceberg. I flipped 1912 a little earlier. And in 1912, the Titanic avoided an iceberg. Amazing. Uh, we almost hit that, says Lookout. And it ripples 1929 and 1933. So 29 Paradox, because that was the only card it needed. 33 needs both the Titanic to uh, not hit the iceberg, and it needs the Lusitania to not sink. So. I lied about this guy. He wasn't almost done. Oh, no. I, I missed the silver on his shoulders. I've talked on a couple of the streams where I've done miniature painting about how relaxing this is. Just playing with the paint on the figure and cosmonauts are now orbiting the moon. Alright, go cosmonauts. Yeah, I really want to get Betty home. As soon as I get Betty home, it makes this whole thing easier. World peace! Hang on to that. I really like having world peace, but I don't, you don't need, need it. need it, yeah. Not yeah. for this game. Yeah. Oh, all my needs to be good. It's so difficult for me Do still. Do I need to kill Reagan? Can I kill Reagan? Uh, I suppose. I mean... I don't think anyone need any of my time travelers need him alive. So instead of being wounded, he's going to be assassinated. Womp womp. Womp womp. Um, which means the challenger is, is not your... going to explode. Your love for Jodie Foster? Yes, to prove my love for Jodie Foster. Um, and the Soviet Union isn't going to collapse. European economy booms! Sure. Yeah, sure. Somebody needed that, right? Yes. Um, one of my favorite cards. Fair goer to love German cake. Yay. Fair goer to love German cake. Uh, that happens instead of Germany invading Poland. I think it's a superior outcome. It okay. is. But none of my, uh, none of my people need it, so... This is really frustrating. Okay, guns are now, guns are going to get banned. I fixed this guy. Nice. Now he's got his shoulders. Uh, so guns have now been banned, um, thanks to Senator John Lennon. Uh, his campaign to outlaw guns results in passage of Amendment 29, which repeals the Second Amendment. Mm. Mm. Sure, some people will not be happy about that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll just want to move to Australia. Yeah. Alright, no, so we're not gonna do that. Gold Ooh, Warsaw hosts the Olympic Games. I do need that. So the color I'm using for the outside of their shields here is yeah. sort of yeah, cool yeah, that proper is, Where's your here. last patch? I'm using uh, Scorpion Brass, which uh, I picked up specifically for this. Uh, or I'm sorry, Brass Scorpion. But uh, I realized after I bought it, 
that a paint like this that has suspended flex, which gives it that sort of sheen, yeah. requires a lot of shaking. It sure does. You need to get that well mixed before you can apply it to the model. So I'm just going to shake some paint for a little while on camera. Mm -hmm. Alright, Betty, go home. Betty's now gone home. Yay! Hey, Which that. means now I can kill Hitler. So mercenary. Well, we're gonna legalize pot while we're at it. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so I've now gone through the deck, which means technically I lose. Don't care. So I'm gonna shuffle and keep going. Why not? Yeah. Our stream, we get to make the rules. I can now. So tell us about meeting Kristen Looney. She was pretty cool. Total hippie. Like that. Um, she came by the booth early one morning um, while we were doing stuff. While we were setting up for the morning before like the doors opened. Um, they were over at the um, Foam Brain Games booth. Uh, the Looney Labs folks. And they were hanging out and she was coming around to see who else had her games and how they were doing and stuff. Um, and we love the Winnie Lab stuff, we love Flux, and we love Corona Knots. So, that was really awesome. I saw her and I was like, wait a second. Did you actually That's recognize Kristen her? Winnie. I saw her and I was like, that looks like someone I think I should know. And then I realized she was wearing a lab coat. Oh, okay. And tie-dye. And I thought, there's a good chance that's Kristen Looney. Because I knew she was going to be at the convention. I knew she was going to be at PAX. Uh, PAX and I knew that she was going to be at Foam Brain. And they were, they were going to be like signing stuff and doing like meeting fans and things like that. And I had sort of thought maybe I can get away for a few minutes and go have her sign a card or like say hi. And they were probably talking up, um, what is it, Mini Arcade? Yeah. And uses the pyramid pieces. And uh, she came by, so I asked her to sign. Um, I have a promo card that was, they send out Christmas presents, so I would recommend if you like Flux and Chrononauts and any of the other Looney Labs games. If you like those, get on their Christmas card list. Um, they do a winter holiday mailing list thing where they will email you and be like, hey, do you want a present? And you say yes and they send you like a promo card or a sample game or something like that or an extra board to use with pyramids or something. And so you get like cool free stuff from them for the winter holidays, which is really awesome. And so I had a dinosaur card that can count as any dinosaur in uh, the, the artifact portion of this game. I'm gesturing at my other board, but it's over here. Um, and I had gotten it as a Christmas card, and I asked her to sign it, and she did. Yeah, Apparently, she card. also does something really cool. They're like, I feel like they're local, they're like Rhode Island or something, they're nearby, they're in New England, and she will go to the mall and give out Batman cards for Flux mm. to anyone she sees wearing a Batman shirt. That's awesome. So Batman Flux has a card that says if you are wearing a piece of clothing that has the bat symbol <laughs> on it, you may draw an extra card. Card, card draws are real good. Yeah, it's useful <laughs> in that game. So, yeah. Um, she just seems like a fun, goofy sort of lady, and I was really happy to have her sign a card. And now that card is in my personal copy of Diamond which is why I wasn't going to sell it. I mean, one of the many reasons why I wasn't going to sell it. Uh, so I have a reverse fate, and it's time for me to kill Hitler. It's time. Yep. It's time. Because I don't think I have anyone... I don't have anyone left who needs Hitler alive. So good. So good. Time to kill Hitler. So I'm going to reverse fate. And uh, kill Hitler. 
Nazi leader makes speech at Berlin Olympic Games, and instead Adolf Hitler is assassinated. Berlin Olympics marred by sniper attack on host nation's leader. Now this ripples a lot. So it ripples 1939. Germany is no longer going to invade Poland in 1939. I did not keep the patch for that. Um, it ripples 1942, the you final solution. Lovers loving no, cake? fairgoers are not going to love German cake. Um, but the final solution is no longer going to be undertaken. Instead, we are going to repeal. Oh, did I discard that? I discard repeal the Nuremberg race laws. I'm really sad I had to do that. Anyway, I'll get it back. Um, it also ripples 1944, D Day, but it doesn't do it on its own. I have to also um, have Pearl Harbor not bombed to undo D Day. Um, yeah, there's a couple of those things where multiple things have to happen. But 1945, A-bombs dropped on Japan is definitely going to flip. And I'm going to install World Peace instead. So, that makes me happy. World Peace. You can thank this lady. <laughs> I was, I was going to make a miscongeniality joke, but you, ste you oh, stepped on it. Sorry. We already had our perfect date. Yeah, but in her her question about like what's so if you could like have one thing, what would you have? It's like harsher uh, punishments for parole violations. Oh and <laughs> oh and world peace. This congeniality. So good. All right. Um, it also ripples 1948. Uh, so Israel is not going to be founded. Instead, Berlin is going to host the World's Fair. Because Israel was founded in response to the Holocaust. Yeah. And if that doesn't happen, yeah. that doesn't happen. So yeah, cause and effect. I mean, like I said, this is a very simplified version of history. Obviously, there are a lot more factors at play in like actual history. So, you know. This is sort of, it's a very black and white sort of thing. This happened, so this happened. This didn't happen, so this doesn't happen. Um, so, 1917, Berlin is hosting the World Fair, the Titanic's exploding, and the U.S. declared war on Germany in 1917. Renee can go home. Thank goodness. Yeah. All right, so I'm down to Gunther and Ginon. And, uh... Andrew Johnson is in peach. Warsaw? Is Warsaw hosting the Olympic Games yet? No. But guns have been banned. Um, and I do have that card for 1944. Oh, I could probably do this. Uh, Wilson keeping the U.S. out of the war, I can now do. Because I can save the Lusitania. Because, yeah, okay, I can do this. I'm going to discard that and draw myself a different card. Good, I got another reverse fate. So I'm going to reverse fate on the Lusitania. Equal Ripple 1917. 17. 1917. Um, the U.S. is not going to declare war on Germany. Instead, the U.S. Uh, is going to stay out of the war thanks to Woodrow Wilson. Oh, Only nice thing I have to say about that. So far. Hmm. Fun fact, during the uh, suffrage movement at the time, um, suffragists burned President Wilson in effigy on the front lawn of the White House. Okay. That happened. Women didn't have the vote yet. They were very angry. Um, World War III, going to discard that. All right, let's see. I'm going to discard that. Uh, 1944. Can I make that happen? I think I can. Oh, 17, 18, and 50? Gunther gets to go home. Yay, Gunther. So, Gunther, uh, the Wilson kept the U.S. out of the war. The European economy is booming. And in 1950, Seoul was captured by North Korea. So, Gunther gets to go home. And I'm down to Dinan. Uh, Andrew Johnson is impeached. 
Warsaw is not yet hosting the Olympic Games. D-Day is still happening, but guns are banned. I'm my face, and I'm trying to stay perfectly still. It's very annoying. You know, when I was painting earlier, when I was painting uh, Didymus's uh, base, you were like putting things down on the table and bumping the table, and I was trying very hard to keep steady. I'm sorry. It's very unpleasant. I know how awful it is when you're so trying to do fine detail and the table moves. So, um... I mean, just now, like, shaking paint is yeah, shaking the whole lawn. it shakes the whole place. Um, so, right now, the only thing I have left to do is to have Warsaw host the Olympic Games. That's it. That's all I got. So, I'm going to have D-Day not happen. Pearl Harbor is no longer bombed. A uh, raid on Pearl Harbor called off by Tokyo meant the U.S. remains neutral anymore. Not drawn in. So D-Day isn't going to happen. Um, oh, I prematurely put down World Peace. World Peace can only happen if both uh, oh. Pearl Harbor and Hitler So are now red. you could do World Peace. Yeah, I mean... We still get world peace. I got early world peace. But now Warsaw is going to host the Olympic Games. And uh, Xinan goes home. Yay! Hooray! That's all three? That's all three. I mean, I did have to go through the deck twice, but... Okay, uh, Patrick Michael says, is there music playing? You can barely hear us. You can barely hear us or the music? barely hear us. Okay. Uh, let me stop it here. So okay, turn the music down. Hey, I need users or something. There's a hair on my model. Can't do any. Not in the what kind of continuum of the field yet. And the future's a tunnel stretching endlessly. Okay. I'm going to try addressing my volume a little bit. The delicate now. What? Where is it? Well, if you can't see it, maybe it's not so bad. It's a very fine hand. That's one thing about having the models right in your face. Alright, so what you corner are was it? red and I am white. Yeah. I'm going to turn those up a bit. I'll turn the master volume up a bit. And so to me, this looks like we're blowing things out. Oh, I see. I see. We're I see where it is. so loud that it's, it's overwhelming. I'm going to turn it down just a nudge. How's that sound? So we're right at the top of the volume levels, but hopefully you can hear us a little bit better now. I think I got it. Way out of focus. He says, oh, no worries, I thought there was a cross connection. Oh, okay. So you can hear us all right then? We'll wait for the lag to go through. You tell us if you can hear us. Here, I think I got it. You got it? Awesome, yeah. thank you. I have long nails. Yeah. So it lets me, and I have lit, like corners on my pinky nails, so I can. Where did I put my brush now? Oh, it rolled off. Making progress here. All right. So I think. I'm gonna try and do an eight. Man, pinky. I might. I might. That's a challenge. It's, it it's is. a real challenge. You're gonna have to reset everything. Yeah, I'm gonna reset. Goodbye, world peace. Oh, yeah. Not very many versions of the timeline that have world peace. Yeah, I don't know if there's anyone who officially needs it. I don't think there are any characters that actually need world peace. It's just something we like to do. Yeah. We just like world peace. I'm a fan of it. Oh I, I'm not really sure why the alternative exists, but you know, that's me. Oh, I, I keep forgetting how relaxing this is. 
Like, I've had a so little sad, bit of a stressful it? week. And it's just so nice. So I had just, you know, to sort of give an idea of my week. Yeah. Yesterday, I was sitting at the back counter at work, eating my lunch, because I don't have a break room. We just have a counter behind the desk. And I was eating my lunch, and I was watching Twitch. I was watching some Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which is a very quiet game until it's very loud. There's, um, a, there's lot a lot of, of sneak, 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 and then shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah, it's all very sudden. Wait, what? Yeah, it's like you're you're alone or you're just with your buddies, and you're all sneaking around and just sort of talking with each other, or just talking to your screen. And then suddenly it, it's like popcorn, and, and then a lot of shooting, and then either you escape and you're quiet again, or you're dead. Um, See, my last game, I didn't get shot. No. I got run over by a jeep. I was fourth, fourth place. And it was just a dude in a jeep. And, and I he was, was using it like a weapon. Yeah, I was creeping around in a field. It's a, it's a strat. And yeah, he just drove right over me. Yeah, yeah. He spotted you and he went for it. Anyone? Well, well, well he might not have won, but he not definitely to be playing, you out. like in cover. Like I, I was trying to get to a bush to hide in. Yeah. But if I had been playing next to a tree, he couldn't have rammed me like that. Yeah, he learn. could have found a way. Someday I'll get a chicken dinner. Anyway. Someday. You have a third in like your first week playing yeah. that game, so I think that's pretty good. Anyway, um, I was watching a stream of that, and it was really tense, and there was a lot of sneaking happening, and I was eating my lunch, and my hands were covered in peanut butter and cinnamon because I was eating an apple with peanut mm -hmm. butter and cinnamon. And I had my back turned, and like I moved slightly, and suddenly, hey, there's my boss. <laughs> there's the library director standing behind me. <laughs> it's very, I mean, it's not a bad thing. I like the library director. He's, I get along with her very well, and she seems to like me and like the work that I'm doing. Just but sudden it was just sudden and unexpected. She'd come over to talk about new furniture for my library. But I had thought, and, yeah, me, and I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was coming up. I knew this was a thing that was going to be happening sometime in the near future. I was just under the impression that she was going to call me and let me know instead of just showing up. So it was a little stressful. I mean, it's fine. It's just it started out really stressful. Yeah, it's not. It was unexpected. So. But today I got to sit down with a couple of my coworkers, including my newest coworker, who I really like, um, and I'm really excited to have her in my department. And we talked about how we're going to run a. Oh no, I am not playing with squad front. <laughs> um, we're gonna. Um, we're gonna uh, do a Harry Potter day at work. Oh yeah. We want to do a Harry Potter day on the stream. Uh, Pepper says the audio is very static. Uh oh, bees, bees. I can fix this. I can fix this. Give me a second here. All right. So we're gonna try and fix the audio. It. Give us a moment. Gonna take a couple of seconds. Tell us if that's better. Hopefully, that reduced some of the static. I We're hoping. There's, there's I'm a asking. Lag, so it's gonna take a moment. I've got eight time travelers. Not Squatron. No, not Squatron. Screw Squatron. Um, Squatron is. He needs the Great Depression to happen, which is super sad. He needs a Zeppelin factory to open in Seoul, and then he needs World War III. Uh, Patrick says, much better. Thank you, Patrick. Awesome. I'm glad I know how to fix that when it happens. I don't know how to prevent it from happening in the first place. Yeah, it just seems like it's a thing. It's annoying. 
Um, my theory is that it's a memory leak somewhere in the software for the USB uh, mixing board. That sounds probably right. Um, um, Patrick, I am playing a game called Chrononauts, which is um, a game about time travelers trying to get home to their home uh, timelines. So I have a big board full of cards that represent different points in our timeline. And the way they start out, it's the timeline that we know. But I have a deck of cards that lets me affect the timeline by uh, flipping things using reverse fate cards and things like that. And those flip certain cards. They flip uh, these purple cards called linchpins to a, an orange side with a red icon. And when they flip, they affect years that are listed on the card. So if Lincoln is not assassinated in 1865, in 1868, Andrew Johnson does not get impeached because he's not the president to be impeached. Um, but instead of that happening, there's a paradox because it didn't happen, but nothing else has happened instead. So also in the deck, are patches that can be put into uh, paradoxed parts of the timeline and make different things happen. And each time traveler has two orange things that happen differently than they happen for us and one blue that happens like it happened for us. And in a competitive game, which is one reason why we really like this, competitive games, you play against each other and each person has a personality. Co-op or solitaire and you just lay out a bunch of time travelers and try to get them all home. Yes, it is indeed Looney Labs. Um, we love Flux. I highly recommend if you like Looney Labs and you like their sense of humor and you like sort of how their games play, definitely pick up Chrononauts. Uh, Chrononauts is super fun and, and it has a couple of... it for so long. It was out of print for ages and it's been reprinted along with all of its expansions. So it has uh, three expansions, two that add to the timeline, and one that adds a number of time travelers. The timeline expansions are uh, Early America, which add, it's like an entire separate timeline that goes before this timeline, and it can be played by itself, which is really nice, or you can just stick it up top and play an entire game all mixed together. The newest uh, printing of these cards will tell you, let me find one of the specialized flip cards, um, like Prevent Assassination. If you look down at the bottom of it, you can see, like, you can see it lists the cards that it can affect. It will also affect the one at the bottom, and that's one of the Early America cards. So the Early America game is a full game. It has its own deck of, like, action cards and patches but because there's the possibility of just mixing them all together they like eroded the original game to affect the cards in the early America so that like prevent assassination can work on that even if it's the version from the core game um, and then there's the Gore years which posits that Al Gore won in 2000 and adds uh, like six cards after the fact. Um, not a full eight cards because it came out close enough to it that they only had enough points to change for six cards. I was saying to Andy earlier, I would very much like if they came out with another expansion for the Hillary years or something um, and do sort of a, an added timeline add-on since the Gore years. Um, which would be kind of cool. I'd like to see what they come up with because a lot of these patches and the timelines and the way that they affect each other um, have to do with, you know, oh, we can see a connection between this and this and that and that. And, you know, Lincoln not being assassinated affects Nixon resigning later. So they definitely did a lot of research. Um, you know, I was saying earlier, it's a very black and white sort of view, you know, this affects this. And, this doesn't happen because this didn't happen. Um, and yeah, that's a, a pretty like simplified way of looking at things. But at the same time, for a game like this, it works. So I'm, I just did a four traveler game of this. 
and uh, went through the whole deck of actions <laughs> and had to start over. But um, I'm going to try eight. You tried it. So while you were shuffling, I'm go. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, like Patrick, um, I am painting miniatures from the game Room Wars, the miniature game. Uh, these are Warikar soldiers. They're undead soldiers. You can tell that they're skeletons. Uh, and these are my first painting project. Uh, I have been working on them for a couple months now because I only have a few hours a week when I actually have time to sit down and paint. So I'm getting close to them. I'm doing some fine detail on them. What I'm doing right now is uh, I'm painting the shields on these guys. So let's find an example here. Um, nope, not him. That. This guy with the axe. So, what I'm working on right now are the shields. If I move these guys out of the way, here is a guy with an unpainted shield, and here's the guy I just finished Credit. doing. So, I'm painting okay. this sort of copper right. rim on the shields, doing this sort of fine detail work which really brings the models to life for me. And the music, if you can still hear the music in the stream, I turned it way down, but hopefully you can still hear it, is from Miracle of Sound, one of our favorite composers, Gavin Dunn. Uh, it is a selection of more orchestral songs from him, so a lot of Skyrim stuff, um, more sort of symphonic sounding yeah. stuff for, he does a lot of heavy metal he uh, i mean he he loves metal songs. he's like a metal yeah. artist but general. for this stream i've chosen a selection of more orchestral stuff did you put in beauty bleak which one beauty bleak fallout the fallout 3 one i don't know if i do have that on there i should it's so good yeah it's just so like chill <laughs> and sad yeah so, um, my opening hand had three patches that I need, so... Wow, it's going to be rough. Uh, it's going to be tough. Um, so I have the Vietnam Peace Accords signed, the Nuremberg Race Laws repealed, and David Koresh's ministry opening a new hospital. My time travelers are Rainbow, Yuri, Yitzhak, Fruit Basket, Oliver, Andy, Timmy, and Mr. X. Um, Rainbow is definitely a hippie it's actually like specifically described as a hippie is this going to be impossible i think it might be um mm. it's okay it's okay it's all right so who's in direct uh yeah that's always a good way to start is figure out who so Mr. X and Yitzhak opposite things to happen on a certain date. Mr. X and Yitzhak both need uh, Koresh's ministry to open a hospital. And you so have that card. I have that card, yeah. Um, and they aren't really in... See, the tricky part is when you have two time travelers in the solo game, anyway. Um, the tricky part is when you have two time travelers that both need, like, the same part in one part, but then are directly opposed otherwise. Really annoying. <laughs> uh, Patrick says uh, he's going to have to look into getting a copy of uh, Chrononauts. Cool. And that nice job on the painting. Uh, he wishes he had patience for that. He has a copy of Blood Rage with naked miniatures. <laughs> you should show your uh, labyrinth oh, yeah. miniatures. I'll show off my labyrinth minis. I just finished painting my labyrinth minis. So there is a labyrinth board game, if you didn't know. Yeah. It is kind of hard to get a hold of. Uh, we managed to pick it up right when it first came out. Because we were like, labyrinth board game? Andy, if I hand these to you, can you put them on the little cam? Uh, sure. Hang on. Let me clean my brush. Cool. I made Andy start getting in the habit of cleaning his brush all the time. Yeah, when I started painting, 
I would just wait until my brush wasn't applying paint anymore and then put more paint on it. And Amanda saw me doing this and like it was causing her physical pain. It hurt. <laughs> it hurt so bad. It's like you're gonna kill your brush. Okay, so let me move these guys out of the way. And go ahead and pass me. Here's Nudo. So that I have to move the camera because Nudo yeah, is big. Nudo's really big. There we go. Is he all on frame? No, just he's... Just his head? Yeah, just his head. How's that? Ludo. Friend. So yeah, so there's, there's Ludo. Some amazing detail on Ludo here. Um, I'm pretty pleased with him. Just like the, the detail on his face, and he's got a lot of texture in the fur. Amanda's a much better painter than I am, and just... It's has a accidental. lot more technique. What? It's all accidental. Yeah, well, I mean, no. You, you've spent a lot more time painting I than I That's have. That's true. I have spent a lot more time painting. My earlier ones are not as... Okay, there's Sarah Luda. next. Here's Sarah. Is she in? I can't see because I don't have yeah. my glasses on. Uh, back a tiny bit. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah. She's even got her little white socks on the tops of her loafers. With. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fine detail work. Yeah, the filigree on her vest was a giant pain. Uh, got hobbled. So these were naked figures. These were yeah, just these completely were gray plastic there, when I got she them. She did everything with these. There's Hoggle. Oh, it's Hoggle. Hoggle is Hoggle's friend. Um, his vest was really tricky. He had a lot of texture on his vest that I had to highlight and In the back of his wash vest, you had to and highlight work on that wash so and much. highlight and wash. Yeah, it was a lot of layers on that. Mm. And then we've got Jareth. Yep. Now there all he of is. these came with cards. So like that Sarah in the card. Uh, uh, there we go. And then there's Hoggle's card and Ludo's card and then there's Didymus and Ambrosius so I did their bases to match their cards but also um, some of the color choices that I made and like facial choices like facial makeup and stuff that I made um, were made because of some of the representation on the card final one yes this, this is the one is I just finished and is Sir my Didymus. goodness, the detail on this. I don't um, think that Jareth, the camera is going to pick it up. Jareth did not come with a card because he's the villain of the game, so he just sort of appears on spaces. How's the framing on that? That's pretty good. Is it in focus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Just wow. Yeah. Um, wow. Didymus, See, I am not at that level. <laughs> Didymus, I had to look up the heraldry on Ambrosius's blanket. And fortunately, some very dedicated fan on like DeviantArt did a character study on like every character in the movie, including details about their costuming and stuff, and had obviously gone to see like an ex exhibition of the puppets from the movie and had done um, a really, really nice job drawing out all of the heraldry on Ambrosius's blanket and explaining all of them. So I used that uh, lovely, lovely picture for So that. it's not in the sculpt at all. That's just a, a blank space on the sculpt, right? What was that? There's yeah, nothing on the a, sculpt. Yeah, there's yeah. no sculpted parts to the heraldry. Oh, no. Patrick says uh, he's also colorblind, which oh. makes playing certain board games a little challenging, too. Yeah. Oh, that's rough, man. Um, yeah, one of the things, there are a couple of games that I like, um, like Lanterns, I really like because it is color specific, like it's about color matching, but all of the lanterns are differently shaped. Yeah. And so even if you can't tell the difference between like two of the colors, the shapes of them are different. So you can tell that they're different based on like the lanterns are square or they're star shaped or they're like circular. And I really liked that. I thought that was a really thoughtful design to have them all very distinctive. Yeah. So that even people who can't tell the difference between the colors could still play it. So yeah. one more that was really has neat. a solution to that. Um, but not a good solution. 
that. And thank you, Patrick. Uh, I, I worked really hard on them. The movement dials for Room Wars mm. have four different color of move that you can make. And depending on the color of move that you make, you can modify it with the same color. However, for somebody who is colorblind, has different uh, has difficulty perceiving the difference between, say, blue and red, or green and red. Uh, it would be difficult to choose the right modifier because yes. you wouldn't be able to see what color you're modifying. Mm. So their solution. Actually, I can probably grab one of the dials here. Give me a second. Basically, movement in Rune Wars is done using a dial similar to uh, X-Wing Minis. But the Rune War dial has two dials yeah. on it. Uh, I'm sure I can find one. I haven't played Hanabi um, or Lotus. I've seen Lotus played, um, but it was at PAX East, and I was really exhausted, so I don't remember much about it. I haven't seen Hanabi played. Um, I probably so could. Here's a room war dial. You can see it's got one dial over here yeah. and one over here. When you're making your move, you turn one dial to the type of move you're making and then you modify it on the other side. In this example, uh, you have a green movement with a green modifier, which is perfectly legal. That's how it's supposed to work. You could not modify that green movement with a red modifier. However, if you can't tell the difference between those colors, it makes it very, very difficult for you. Yeah. What their solution is, is I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but they have a tiny little letter <laughs> at the bottom of the movement dial there that tells you what color it is. So this is, a, and it's black on brown. So it's the, the contrast is not great, but this has a G under it. And this has an R under it. So you would know that those don't match. It's, it's clumsy. It's not ideal. But at least they did put some thought into it, I guess? Anyways. Wow, I don't know if this is... if this selection is manageable. You might have gotten a group that cannot all get home. Yeah. So put Sir Didymus back in. Yeah. While I continue to work on this shield here. Um... So Rainbow and Andy, I believe, are directly opposed with each other. Um, Which if you get really good draws, you can still work. Yeah. Like you can get one of them home early and then immediately flip their stuff away. Well, they have one thing that they agree on. They both want to smoke pot. Okay, that's fine. Um, they both want marijuana legalized. Um, but Rainbow wants Israel to be founded in 1948, which means we can't kill Hitler. But Andy wants fairgoers to love German cake in 1939, which means we have to kill Hitler. And uh, Rainbow wants the Vietnam Peace Accord signed in 1968, which means we have to save JFK. But Andy wants Apollo 11 to land on the moon, which means we have to kill JFK. Yeah. Mm. Or we could sabotage Sputnik. Maybe I'll sabotage Sputnik. Let's sabotage Sputnik. Okay. Uh, Sputnik's not going to get launched. Tough. Deal with it. Uh, Sputnik rocket is going to explode on the pad. The American Vanguard satellite becomes the first to orbit Earth instead. Uh, Patrick says he gets lost in the shades. Primary colors are okay, but blues and purples are the worst. Mm. If he's ever in a situation where he needs to diffuse a bomb by cutting the blue, not purple wire, wire run. It's like that scene in The Abyss. Oh, I love that <laughs> scene. His, his light goes out, so he has to use the glow sticks instead. Supposedly that's not in the script. That that's came hilarious. During filming. Yeah. Um, he, if you haven't seen The Abyss, uh, there's a bit near the end where a character oh, needs to awful. diffuse oh, a bomb. Oh my goodness, I need to get this paint off of here quickly. And um, he's been told he needs to cut the black wire with the yellow stripe. Not the white wire with the blue stripe. Not. Repeat not. Right. Not. And uh, he 
his light has gone out, his regular like helmet light, he's underwater, has gone out, he's lost that light, he's too deep. And the only thing he's had, he's cracked a couple of glow sticks. Well, of course, the glow stick light is green, and it has totally thrown off his color perception of the wires. They look identical in that lighting, so he just sort <laughs> has to make he has to make a guess and just hope for the best and hope that if it explodes, he'll die fast. <laughs> the abyss is aged really well. Yes, that is the one with the glow stick, Patrick. <laughs> I haven't watched that in so long because we don't really, have cable anymore. On, no, that's true. That's true. We're not watching cable anymore. So back back when I had, we had we we cut the cord. We cut cable. Uh, I don't know, maybe six months ago. And prior to that, I work out in my living room like an hour a day, and I would flip channels if there was nothing specific on. And the abyss just seemed to be on all the time. <laughs> I could just watch it whenever. I was always coming into like the middle of it. We'd be like, oh, there's that water snake. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, there goes the hose. There's a storm. <laughs> and the military stole the vehicle they need to decouple. Those jerks. <laughs> Back when James Cameron put Michael Bean in everything he did. That's right. <laughs> it's a really good movie. I it really, really like that movie. movie. progress here. How many more do I have to go? Oh, uh, well. I think I've got five more shields to paint. You can do it. No, I've only got three Run. more shields to paint, to paint. And then it's all apparently I don't need fine detailing. That? Wow, this guy's wash made him come out dark. Oh, hey. I didn't. I, I went kind of dark I on this guy. That. Oh, well. That's fine. That's fine. That's why uh, I don't know if everybody was here when I said that these were my first painting job that I've ever done. <laughs> uh, I chose the Undead Army to start oh. painting with because I figured if they came out looking janky, that was okay. That was a bad idea. I shouldn't have done because that. Because they're undead, undead so they're supposed Oops. to look a little bit off. Is your thing not, not working? I did a thing I shouldn't have done. Oh. <laughs> Did sabotaging Sputnik not work for I, you? I should not have said. Actually, you know what? Fine. I'll sabotage Sputnik, and Andy is just going to have to stay in a different timeline. I'm sorry, Andy. Oh, is it me? It's you. Sorry, guys. You didn't know. I'm from an alternate timeline where something else happened, which I don't uh, know what it Fair was. love German cake, Apollo 11 lands on the moon, and marijuana is legalized in your timeline. Well, uh, marijuana is mostly legal in Massachusetts. Apollo Yay. did land on the moon. So, you know, I'm sorry about the fair lovers. The, no, the fair, fair lovers, lovers? The fair lovers go to German cake? <laughs> yes. Um, his story is, I met myself once. A familiar stranger appeared at my home, looking around nostalgically. Invest in Microsoft, he advised. Then he explained that we'd meet a time traveler someday, right here in this diner. So, now I'm rich. But I can't ever leave this restaurant. What if my ride shows up and I'm not here? <laughs> I do like the little drabbles, the little stories. Yeah, I love the stories. Ooh, marijuana is legalized. You know what so. that reminds me of? Is nanofictionary. Yeah, we've never actually played that. I played it once. But is that another Looney Labs game? I feel like it is. I think it is. I guess oh, people play Rory Story Cubes nowadays instead. Uh, he says, thanks for the Clank promo card you gave him a couple of weeks ago. He has oh, already yeah. rolled it into a few games. That's awesome. Super cool. Thank you for watching. I'm going to look up Nano Fictionary. Okay. Need some yes, Google it is it? indeed Looney Labs. Is it still available, I wonder? It's on their They're site. In the store. Uh, looks like it's being re-released August 17th. Oh, cool. Pre-order from a store near you. Pre-order from Battleground, guys. You can do that. And yeah, there is a drawing of Kristen Looney with her bandana on the site. I knew I'd seen her. So you didn't just intuit who she was. I mean, I kind of did, but...
So I kind of want to play Rune Wars on the stream. Yeah. But I've been painting these figures for two months and don't even have 16 figures done yet. And I need like 40 for an army. And I don't want to play on stream with unpainted figures. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe someday. It's a work in progress. Yeah. I think that's fine. All right. Well, we're just going to have to make some sacrifices here. Some of these people are not going home. That yeah, happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you get such a feeling of accomplishment when you actually do it. I know. We've done it a couple of times. Yeah. And it's like, yes. So, fine. Kennedy's going to live. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. What results from Kennedy survive? Uh, the Vietnam Peace Accord is going to get signed. That sounds cool, too. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. Oh, and we're going to impeach... Uh, we're going to undo that. Do I need the European economy to boom? I totally do. <coughs> well, I backed myself into a corner here. Oh, no. Bummer. That's okay. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to draw an extra card. Reverse fate! Well, we're going to reverse. Uh, we're going to uh, save Archduke Ferdinand. Keeps uh, European, Europe from being in ruins. The European economy is going to boom instead. Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, let's save Abraham Lincoln. This is always fun, doing detail on backsides and insides where nobody but me <laughs> is ever going to see it. No one knows. I know. Nobody knows. I know it's there. Alright, so the European economy is booming, D-Day is happening. I need to ban guns for Timmy to go home. Cosmonauts are orbiting the moon, but communism hasn't reinvented itself. President King is taking office. We need the stock market to crash? Yeah. Um, I need to keep the U.S. out of war, so the Lusitania needs to not sink. Let's do that. Ripples in the timeline. Yeah, no one needs the Great Depression, so, you know. That's nice. Yeah. So have you explained that if you have too many paradoxes, it Yeah, the board ends? blows up. You yeah. can only have 13. There is a character who needs 13 in order for, uh, in order to go home, so. But not in this set. Let's save John Lennon. Okay. Again, I like that. Uh, Big Beatles fan Challenger myself. is still exploding, but... We can ban guns, I, I believe. Oh, I actually need the mild recession. Do I need the Titanic to explode? No, I don't. Wow, okay. There, another one done. Let's uh, save the Waco compound. I don't think anyone needs 93 to 95 have to happen. Yeah, Oklahoma City bombing. Well, Yuri's not going home. I mean, I can Sorry, undo Yuri. things. Gosh. Oh, yeah. I don't think any of you people are getting home. I think I'm just messing with the timeline at this point. <laughs> Make the timeline what you want it to be. <laughs> timeline is what I want. Um, so the mild recession is happening. Who needed the mild recession? Abraham Lincoln's impeached. 
a milder session. Fruit Basket is going home. Yay. Yay, Fruit Basket. Enjoy your home timeline. Well, I don't need allied troops to invade Tokyo. <laughs> oh, that means I can, uh, I can ha have Reagan assassinated, which flips that and that. Yes, excellent. We'll legalize marijuana. So marijuana is legalized, the Vietnam Peace Accord is signed, and Israel is founded. Rainbow can go home. Rainbow! Not wavy gravy at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andy, fairgoers love German cake. Good for them. Yeah. I also have world peace. And I really want world peace. But Timmy needs to... You know what? Timmy's already not going... Going home, so... Hey, Andy. Hello? Is the store open on the 4th? That's an excellent question to which I do not have an answer. As <laughs> far as I know, it is not. I don't know. Uh, is I Derek will... in the store? No, he's at Saugus today. He said he was coming in here. He told me yesterday he was going to come in He here. did come in here, uh, and he picked up the Saugus or special orders and took them to Saugus. Oh. Well, my mom, my mom wants to know if we're joining them on the 4th. Oh, okay. I mean, even if the store is open, the post office is not? True. So... I'm just training up my magic heart. His name is Bob. Make him jump. Well, I'm gonna. But first I'm gonna respond to my mom. Always thrilling when people on stream play with their phones. That could be a whole stream. <laughs> just the two of us staring at our phones. An experience you could not get anywhere else. I don't know how it's like much you're right more here with us. Watching people play with their phones is than watching people paint miniatures that you can't see. I mean, you're literally watching paint dry. Yeah. I think it might so just be on these guys. Just the two of us. I think some of our friends are downstairs. Yes, some of our friends are downstairs. We should like drag kids upstairs. I would expect that our friends would know where we are and would visit us if they got a buy. I could our be wrong. Our friends may not be getting buys. They may just be winning too much. Could happen. Wild. Uh, I think we're going to kill Hitler. Go for it. It's all, I mean, I try and do every game. I try and kill him at least once per game. And I think it was time. I think it was definitely time. So if you out there watching me paint these figures and looking at the figures that we've painted, think to yourself, I can do better than that. Well, you know, there are a lot of people in our community who can. We have a contest for you. <laughs> We're doing a $5 miniature painting contest where you pay $5 to enter. You get a 5x5, five five, or I'm sorry, 3x3 three three inch base and put on that base any figure you would like. And, you know, any terrain or anything you want to put on that base. Uh, I will, at some point on one of these streams, start building my thing on my base. I'm going to be doing a D&D &D, uh, sort of diorama with some kobolds and a bard and a treasure chest. 
Uh, I'm going to be experimenting with some new techniques as I do all that. Um, I'm going to try and build a base out of foam that fits on the thing and paint that base and texture it. And all these fun things. So, yeah, definitely enter that contest. I would love to see the amazing things that some of our powerfully good battleground community are capable of. Because I am not a very, very good painter. I have a great deal of patience and I can sit and work on something for hours and hours and hours but it's still not going to match some of the things that I know folks in the battleground community are capable of. I just don't have the skill and the practice with the kind of incredible techniques that they work with. So I'm looking forward to some of the amazing things to come out of that contest. I do love these room war figures though. I love the sculpts. I love the detail. So much for me to work with. So I got four time travelers home before I ran out of deck, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, so I have four more that I'm going to try. I've reshuffled the deck, but I've also um, taken all the patches out of the deck. So what I've got is what I've got. Um, and I did accidentally discard a patch that I'm going to need for one of them. So um, yeah, Mr. X isn't going to be going home. So okay. I'm actually going to ignore him. Um, he's just going to have to cope. Uh, right. His story is, our national security is threatened by Zeppelins. <laughs> um, the military usefulness of their Zeppelins was widely regarded as a key to the early German victories of World War II. But what if something had happened before the war that crippled the airship industry? The sabotage of the Hindenburg was intended to shorten one war, but to the time traveler's dismay, it instead triggered another, Korea. So, yeah, Mr. X is not going to go home. Um, I was able to get a fruit basket, Rainbow, Timmy, and Oliver home. So our fruit basket is uh, Bob Who. 50 years after the invention of time travel, the one eternal constant was the need for qualified time machine repairmen. Like Bob Fruit Basket. Bob could fix anything, including the 43 Panasonic D Paradoxer. Unfortunately, a careless tourist's time ripple changed Bob's destiny before he ever learned time machine repair. Instead, he's now a lunar real estate agent. Uh, we, uh, Rainbow, why didn't you look in the glove box? When Dr. Enarambus vanished, uh, that is, submarine backwards, Wendy inherited his time machine. It was installed in a black 1973 Volkswagen Beetle, selected as the car most likely to blend into any past or future setting. It's but when bad, yeah. Yeah, but Wendy didn't comprehend what she really owned. She sold it to a couple of hippies, and those two are seriously tripping now. Yes. Timmy, green submarine. Music blared from the radio. Some of us live in a green submarine, saying Tringo of the beepers. The time traveler's father shook his head. Damn that kid in his time machine, he said, rising from his chair. How often have I told him not to muck with the music? Martha? <laughs> Oliver. How Shakespeare lived to be 653. The time traveler swiped Shakespeare's still warm corpse, replacing it with a synthetic replica, and restored his health using 23rd century medical technology. Now write, he commanded. I'll produce your lost works and become rich beyond imagining. But the bard, bewildered by the future, had lost his touch. Mona and the dragon was a turkey. So that's who we've gotten home. Can live in their own home timelines. Uh, Mr. X is not going to go home, so I'm going to ignore him. And now I have Yuri, Yitzhak, and Andy. Yuri needs cosmonauts to orbit the moon, which is currently happening. He also needs communism to reinvent itself, which is also happening. But he needs the Oklahoma City bombing to happen, which uh, unfortunately at the moment, well fortunately, uh, David Crush's ministry opened a new hospital instead. The bombing didn't happen. Um, 
But Yitzhak needs the ministry to have that hospital open. And if I like discard this patch, if I undo that, I'm going to lose that patch. So Yitzhak needs Europe to be in ruins after World War I. Right now the European economy is booming because I saved Archduke Ferdinand. Neither Yuri nor Andy needs Archduke Ferdinand saved, so I'm going to restore history. Oh, restore history, okay. To undo uh, Ferdinand unharmed in attack, which will unflip 1918, discarding the European economy booms. Europe is now in ruins after World War I. The Nuremberg race laws have been repealed, which is awesome. Well, it's and uh, very loud in here. Yeah, it got really There's noisy. Maybe it's in between rounds. In oh yeah. Um, and Koresh's hospital is opening, or Koresh's ministry is opening a new hospital. So Yitzhak gets to go home now. Hooray! Um, Yitzhak's is kind of sad. Um, my great great grandparents died at Auschwitz. The 1936 Berlin Olympics ended in chaos. Adolf Hitler was assassinated. Afterwards, things gradually improved for German Jews. But the sniper was a time traveler. The universe rippled back to normal when another chrononaut stopped the assassin. How do I know? I was in the time traveler's tiki lounge at the time. Technically, I don't exist. So we have wow, restored it, and I, I kept Adolf Hitler assassinated and repealed the Nuremberg race laws. So Yitzhak gets to actually go home now. I fixed it. Okay. Um, so I've got Yuri and Andy shields. left. Now I can undo 95, which ripples with the Waco standoff. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to reverse fate the Waco standoff. Uh, unfortunately, Waco is going to burn to the ground again, um, which discards that, which means the Oklahoma City bombing is happening. Cosmonauts are orbiting the moon. Cos communism is reinventing itself, and the Oklahoma City bombing is happening. This is Yuri. I was even named after Gagarin. Rather than tamper with our own nation's history, my first mission was to prevent the assassination of an American president in 1981. That would be Reagan. Um, ironically, this caused the collapse of the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah. And erased the Kazmastan chronodrome from existence. So now I work for the Time Repair Agency fixing paradoxes. I'll get a promotion after 10. Yuri gets to go home. So all I have left is Andy. Andy. Um, and fairgoers love German cake. I don't think you would love German cake though, because they're talking about like German forest cake, like the the stuff with the uh, coconut frosting, oh. like that goopy frosting with the coconuts and walnuts. Uh -huh. You don't like coconut or walnuts. Yeah. So, ironically, you are Andy, but you would not like German cake. There is a certain irony there, I suppose. Yeah, it's just a bit. Oh, damn. Uh, so fairgoers do love German cake. And marijuana is legalized. But you need Apollo 11 to land on the moon, which means we need to... Unfortunately, we need to keep Sputnik up there. So we're going to reverse fate on Sputnik. Sputnik is going to launch successfully. Um... Oh, I should have had that paradox. Oh, well. Um, and I unfortunately have to keep JFK assassinated. So. Sorry, JFK. I recently went to the uh, JFK Library and Museum in uh, Boston, and it's really awesome. I would highly recommend it. We went with my work, uh, like my entire staff at work. Uh, we have one day a year that we closed the library for staff development and we did a whole lot of like talking and meetings and stuff all morning long and then in the afternoon we did a field trip out to the JFK library um, which was really awesome it was really cool to do it it was really cool to do it with all my staff all like my coworkers. yeah so if you are in the area or you're going to be visiting the Boston area, I do highly recommend it. Uh, it's a really, really nice library and museum. Uh, and it's 
No, that shouldn't have been in there. Um, and it's a really nice tr like walk through it. Uh, it's re they've just got some really nice exhibits in there, and the library portion of it is very interesting. They have a whole slab of the Berlin Wall, which is really fascinating. Um, because on one side it was like heavily graffiti and the other side you couldn't get close to so it's bare and the way they have it in the case they have it just standing where you can see all the graffiti but then they have a mirror set up above it so that um, behind it so that you can see the bare side on the back oh Andy gets to go home I'm like drawing cards as if I've still got stuff to do I guess I want world peace, so I'm going to prevent Pearl Harbor from being bombed. Okay. We'll just pretend that that's my timeline, right? Yes, you came from a world <laughs> where there's world peace. D-Day didn't happen. I get world peace. And Mr. X can just stay in limbo. Hopefully he's at the Tiki Hut. Yeah. Tiki Hut at the end of the universe. All right. I want to finish this shield, and then I think we'll wrap this yeah, podcast I think up so. if you want to start fun. putting the demo box away. Yeah. Uh, this will be on the demo wall downstairs in the Abington location, so if you enjoyed watching this and you want to try it out for yourself, you can try out the demo, or of course you can just come in and buy it. Yeah, we have copies. Um, the Chrononauts is in one of the glass cases up at the counter. It's not out, like, on the floor. It's in the case. There are also, I believe, copies of um, all of the expansions. I think there are copies of those downstairs, right? Yes. I know there's Early Americas, so and I know there's Gore Years. The, the Gore Years, um, Early America and Lost Identities have, like, little, like, packets. But uh, the Gore Years is just a little, like, cellophane <laughs> packet. It's like a booster pack of uh, cards. Yeah, it's only it's yeah. tiny. It's very tiny. Because it's only a couple of cards. Because it's basically just the additional timeline cards and the additional patches that you would shuffle into your deck to add to it. So. Almost there. Stay on target. I want to finish this shield, and I noticed that I didn't do the silver. Oh, man, I got too much paint on that brush. I'm going to go take my labyrinth figures downstairs out into the back hall. And seal them. And seal them. Yeah. She's got some varnish paint. Yeah, I have a uh, matte varnish, and I'm going to um, varnish them. I'm going to seal them. That way we can play the game, hopefully on the feed. Yeah. And you guys I'm will get a chance to see Labyrinth in action. Really looking forward to playing Labyrinth on the feed. Um, I have a friend who has never watched the movie all the way through. Like, she's seen most of it, but not all in one sitting, so... Um, and I'd also love to get Sarah out here. We're going to see her this week. Because we've got a ticket for Mystery Science Theater for her. Yes. We've got MST3K tickets. We're very excited. Mystery Science Theater Live. Yeah, so exciting. Even more exciting than Battlegrounds Live. Battleground um, Games Live. <laughs> Coming at ya. All right, there's that last shield done. Here's Sir Didymus. He should be dry now. You, Amanda had to do his base. Yeah, his I had to touch up his base. She was doing. So there's that last shield. Before I close up for the night, I'm going to do one more piece of silver. I noticed that one of the guys who was mostly done, I never did his... Only mostly did. His sleeve. They have these gauntlets on, and I had been doing the edge of the gauntlet with a silver lining to highlight it. So that's cool. And I'll do that. Nope, that's brown. That's not silver. This is silver. Gunmetal. Nice. So yeah. So let me do this, and then. So we're gonna go over to my mom's for Fourth of July, as cool. per usual. So just, you know, because I'm sitting here and we're on stream, the neighborhood I grew up in, my mother still lives there. And 
they have a neighborhood 4th of July parade every year that I used to be in when I was a kid and it is delightfully low budget <laughs> it's like pickup trucks with floats built into the backs of them and like there's at least one float every year where there's a couple of families that pull the float on bicycles yeah I always I've feel bad for them such enormous respect for them because up a hill. that hill right by my mom's street it's I used to go I like I used to bicycle around that area because I grew up there and man biking up that hill is no joke that going down it is fun going up it sucks so yeah um, yeah they sort of hit the bottom of the hill and you can see like the guys on the bikes being like okay let's go uh, uh, yeah uh, yeah it's rough but the kids love it <laughs> And it was always a fun time when I was a kid, so we always go in. Um, they've had a couple of, uh, they had like a marching band recently. When I was a kid, it was a much bigger thing. Um, we used to have at least one marching band, like full marching band, if not two. Um, it's much smaller now, but it's still delightful. And they have a theme. I don't know what this year's theme is. No idea. Next year, I have to talk um, my coworkers into getting a float in it and <laughs> to seeing if we can get the library to have a float in it because all the kids in that neighborhood go to the branch nearby all right so guys thank you so much for joining us that was fun. i hope you enjoyed watching chrononauts seeing yeah. some figures being painted um next week we are not going to be doing a stream because my brother's on, getting married yeah so we're, we're not going to be, be out of town next weekend during the pre-release for uh, Hour of Devastation, which is kind of sad. A little bummed. But the week after that, we will be back. We're going to try and make the streams a twice-a-week thing. Um, we'll work up a schedule so that we'll have something different going on. Um, two times a week, we'll have some sort of fun board gamey thing going on yeah. on the stream and uh, try and get a rotating roster of guests and friends. Yeah, it'd be fun to up. get a couple of different people on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a lot of games that we want to do on stream, so a yeah. lot of I things would, to do. I really enjoyed Colt Express um, at PAX. It was a game that I was not expecting to enjoy as much as I did. We, we knew we had a few copies of it and we wanted to sell it, so Andy and I grabbed the demo copy one night, and this is a thing that we do at PAX East. We take demo copies of games back to our hotel, and we learn them at like midnight. We, yeah. we get back to our hotel around like 11.30, we get ourselves some water, and we sit down and we teach ourselves a game so that we can demo it the next day. We sort of go, okay, we've sold most copies of the things that we came here to demo. What do we have copies of that we, we need to sell? And we did that with Cold Express. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, this is going to be it's And Western. we were trying to learn it at midnight. We were learning it late at night. And the next day, I set up the demo for it and like no one was biting at first. And it was really demoralizing. And then a couple of people came over. And then for the rest of the day, I played that game. And I mean, it's a fantastic looking game. It's, it's got, got these little 3D trains. Feel to it. Yeah. And the meeple move from level to level and yeah it's a really nicely put together game it's it play the play style of it is really interesting so yeah it's a really fun game and i ended up really loving it and really enjoying it but then we sold the demo copy cuz i demoed it so much that we sold it all so i would love to like play it on stream we just don't have a demo copy on hand yeah. But a couple of kids at the library asked me if I would have it at Family Game Day. Oh. Hmm. So I may have to actually like pony up and purchase a copy and see if I can get the library to reimburse me. Okay. <laughs> we have bought, my library has bought copies of games from the store in the past. Carrie bought all her games. She bought some online because there were things she couldn't get a hold of through us, so. Well. Your figures are looking really awesome. They're getting there. They're getting there. And then I have to decide what I'm going to do next. Do I do the archers next, or do I start doing some of the humans and mm. try a different paint scheme? I don't know. Tough decisions, man. Whatever I do, it's going to be fun. And yeah. whatever we do, we hope you'll join us. Yeah. Thanks for being with us, everybody. 
have a good night. Good night. And we'll see you not next week, but the week after. Yep. Bye. <laughs>